Live from Las Vegas, it's The Q, covering HPE Discover 2017, brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of HPE Discover 2017, HP Enterprise's premiere show. This is theCUBE on our third day. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante with SiliconANGLE. Our next guest, Bob Moore, returning back, director of server, software, product security. He's got the hottest product here on the show. We're going to go do a deeper dive. And uh, Jason Stropshire, SVP and CTO Infusion Points. Welcome back, welcome to theCUBE. John, Thank you. Dave. So Good obviously the talk of the here. town here yeah. on the show with a variety of other things, all the simple messaging, which is kind of clean and tight. But outside of that, from a product standpoint, is really some of the security stuff you guys are doing in the silicon. It is. In the servers with Gen 10. Pretty game changing. We've been curious, we want more information. Yeah. Give us Glad some more update, what's the update? Glad to do that, yeah, we're really proud of the announcement. Of course, it's a big, bold announcement this week, uh, claiming ourselves the world's most secure industry standard server. So that's, uh, that's big, that's huge, that's based on this new revolutionary security technology that we've been developing, frankly, over the past couple of years. So it's been two or three years in the making, a lot of hard work, we actually started to look at what type of security trends were happening and what we might have to do to protect the servers. And we've uh, come up with a game-changing capability here. And it's one thing for us to say it internally at HPE, but we were so certain that we were in a great security position that we, we went external and found a security firm uh, outside that uh, independently uh, could look at it and then do some com compare contrast uh, testing with competitive units. So, and let's, let's drill into that. Obviously, I have some other questions on the industry is, uh, in terms of what's going on at the chip level. Yeah. Um, always on, security is kind of a theme we've heard in the past from some of your competitors. But let's get into some of the competitive analysis. What are you guys seeing in the benchmarks? Jason, what are you guys discussing? Because at the end of the day, claims are one thing. No offense to HP, you're kind of biased, of course. And we, <laughs> we sure. had you know, uh, the folks on from the, from the marketing team as well. Where's the, the proof in the pudding? Oh yeah, well, um, you know, one thing that, we're, that we know for sure is that the threat is real, right, with firmware. And um, it was great for us to, to analyze um, HP's new technology. Uh, we had it on the bench, two different beta units. So just for the record, and, uh, you guys are the ones who did the benchmarking. Yes, we did the testing and analysis. Independent. Yeah, Infusion, independent, yeah, Infusion Points is a cybersecurity firm. Independent from HPE, they approached us to do the testing. Okay, great. So, so we have black hat analysts that, that do this sort of thing all the time for our customers. Okay, so and you and to take us through what, what, what happened. Yeah, so um, you know, they procured for us three competitor servers, uh, sent them to our shop, we set them on the bench, all side by side. Uh, from what I can tell, no one's ever really done a test like that um, you know, in the server industry. So it was very exciting. There's been a lot of benchmarking done and performance, things like that. But from a black hat standpoint, to actually look at the hardware, um, that hardware level testing, yeah. we couldn't find any examples of anyone doing it. So I thought that alone was, was just evidence that HPE was very serious about security and they knew what they had. So, um, and you guys getting your hands dirty because you know the malware and all the ransomware stuff going on. People are going through you know, elaborate oh, absolutely, lengths, absolutely. business models, organized teams. This is really orchestrated security market now where the black hat guys are out there really hacking away yeah. at every angle. Yeah, well, you know, and we saw evidence that you know, firmware um, issues and exploits are here to stay. Um, the Vault 7 release that happened recently showed us that you know, there are exploit kits, I Intel, uh, security released within a day a tool to let you do firmware validation, but to do that you have to take your server offline um, and, and build a gold image of what that firmware should look like and then compare, you know, a week later if you think you might have had a breach, you have to take your server down and compare against that gold image. Now who has the time to do that? Yeah. What, um, what we found in, in analyzing the Gen 10 server is HPE has built this in. Uh, where this could be done in real time, while the server's running, no performance hit, no downtime. Um, it, it really is a revolutionary game changer, I think, for firmware security. So Bob, can you explain yeah. what IP you guys developed in silicon that, that Intel, you know, where do they leave off and you, you pick up? Sure, sure, because Intel has some great security technology, and we actually support a lot of the Intel technology, their TXT, their trusted execution technology, uh, as part of our uh, Gen 10 servers. But what we've done at HPE is we've really taken it uh, 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 multiple steps further than that, and we've developed, because we're in a position where we develop our own custom HPE ILO silicon chip, we're able to anchor what we actually do, uh, embed the uh, cryptographic algorithms into that, and then we anchor all the server essential firmware uh, right 
think of it as anchoring it down into the bedrock. So there's really no way that you can get in and, and uh, breach that. And even if you did, instead of taking it offline like uh, uh, Jason was talking about here, we have the ability to not only provide that protection, but we would detect any type of malware or virus that gets in. And then frankly, we can recover that almost immediately within a few minutes. In fact, we're demonstrating that uh, here uh, during Discover this week. So Is it's there protection. any place online where people can get information? People watching, probably curious. Um, sure. site, you can just give them a URL. Yeah, it's just naturally, it's our hpe.com forward slash security, and that's where we've got some white papers there and uh, other things there. Yeah. So, you're saying you, you can recover yes. know, virtually instantaneously, and, and, and you do that by what, fencing certain resources, or? Yeah, what we've done is we've uh, provided, we, we verify as the server is running, we're doing a runtime firmware validation, so we're checking that firmware and make sure it's free of any malware, or viruses, or compromised code, completely, uh, perfect in, in original shape like when we shipped it from the factory, uh, and then we're storing in, in another location inside the server a secure copy of that. Think of it as a lockbox inside the server uh, where it can't be found unless we need to go into recovery mode. Then we draw from that. We've checked it daily. We've we stored it there. We know it's authentic, and we can pull that back to recover in case something does happen to the server. And then you can asynchronously reclaim that wasted resource, clean it up, and then bring it back online. We can. We can recover the server through the firmware. Toward the end of the year, we'll be recovering the operating system as well, so we've got a really holistic way to get that server. When we talk to customers, a real big concern, and, and sometimes it's referred to as bricking a server, you get a brick yeah. server, something that just won't operate. And it's important because 60% uh, of small businesses that suffer a security breach are out of business within six months, and so it can be huge, that lack of cash flow for customers. It's that denial of service, that disruption in business. Yeah. Well, we prevent all of that because we can not only protect the server, but then recover from a breach. So, so the anatomy of that breach, can we go through a common use case? So if malware gets in, it gets into the server, it's hiding. You yeah. know, typically, you don't, you don't know about it. Yeah. In this new scenario with your, your, your Gen 10, you'll be able to identify that, fence That's it, right. protect it, Okay, and, and so the and, and if I understand it, the business impact of the problem you're solving is not only are you sort of automating that protection, but you're also eliminating a lot of wasted time and yeah, and downtime and, and and accelerating the response. Is that we are, yeah, I think that's what Jason was talking about earlier. Normally you would have to, if your server gets infected, you'd completely take it offline and then do a manual recovery. And customers still have the choice to do that, but in our case, we can recover immediately within a few minutes if, if uh, something happens and, and it those, gets a breach. Those types of exploits are typically in the data plane as well. Um, with firmware, you, you can't even really detect that you've been uh, hacked. So, you know, down in the firmware, virus scanners, those things don't work. So um, if, if you have a BIOS exploit, um, you know, that, that is on either the ILO, or you know, that, that would be on the BMC, the Baseboard Management Controller, and undetectable by the operating system. That's great, so, it's, a, it's a clean haven for hackers. I mean, they yeah. love to get in there once you're Absolutely. in. You know, I don't know that a lot of customers uh, realize this, but the first thing, when you turn a server on, the first thing comes on is the firmware, and it's, in our case, it's the ILO right. uh, firmware. Over a million lines of the firmware code run before the operating system even starts. So that's like, can be a cesspool of existence for a Trojan horse, and the research shows that a, a virus, somewhat analogous to a human virus, it can stay in there, hibernate in there for months, maybe even a year or more, until it springs forth, and opens up the passwords, or bricks your servers, or, or does some nefarious I mean, behavior. cesspool, from a customer standpoint, from a hacker, it's like uh, you know, going to the beach. I mean, yeah. pina coladas, you're, you're, you're clean, We've you're seen down the, there. That's right. Well, what's you're the stat? The average, the average time to detect an intrusion is over 200 days. That's right. Right, yeah. so essentially you're detecting it instantaneously. I mean, yeah, we, can, uh, we, we run that uh, runtime firmware validation on a regular basis, can be run as much as every day, mm -hmm. and so you'll know almost immediately, which is really great because a lot of regulatory bodies want to know if the breach has occurred, and so this gives those customers the ability to know if something's happening. All right, so Chase, I want to challenge the, the claim here because, you know, I love, first of all, I love the, the bravado, put the state around, yeah, we're, we're badass, we're number one. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, we know that. What, what is this, what, how did the leaderboard come out? What are the results? Did HP come out number one? Oh, What's absolutely. the lead, what's absolutely. the gap? Talk about the gap between you know, HP, and then other servers, did they, they send you the best servers? What was the benchmark? I mean, I'm sure you guys did your due diligence. Take us through a little bit more of the results. Sure, sure. So, yeah, I mean, I mean again, you know, we were comparing all the servers side by side, um, a test that had never been done uh, from what I had seen. And we, when we looked at, you know, feature by feature and started analyzing things, we, we sort of broke down and we, uh, we saw, we really had um, two different angles we were looking at. The penetration test as aspect, where we were looking for vulnerabilities, 
um, in, in the firmware, in, at the physical layer, at the network layer. Mm -hmm. um, they passed that with flying colors. We found a few minor issues that they jumped on and, uh, and resolved you know, for us within a matter of hours or days. Um, and, and then, you know, the other aspect was a feature by feature comparison that we looked at. What, you know, we looked at um, the Silicon Route of Trust, obviously, and, and we saw what the others were doing there. At best, the other guys were um, using firmware to validate firmware. And the, the obvious issue with that is if, if the firmware is compromised, um, it, it's, it's not a trustworthy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's in no position to validate and verify it's the like integrity Wall Street of policing the itself. inbound <laughs> firmware. <laughs> Can't trust that. <laughs> the hood latch, they, they have a, a revolutionary intrusion detection switch on the Gen 10 that actually det detects if the lid is lifted on the server anywhere from when it leaves the factory to when it arrives at the installation point. The server doesn't have to be plugged in like with the other guys. So it's just a physical casing breach is exactly. detected, and you know, what happens there? Flags the firmware, makes a note, does it shut it down, what it happens? It makes a note, it puts it in the log entry, so you can tell if that server's been tampered with in transit. Yeah. So the insider threat potential right. issue goes away with that. That's right? right, so physical access, you don't have to worry about that because we can verify that that server gets to the customer in its unique, original, authentic condition, because even though the power is off, yeah. that is going to register an audit log alert if that chassis has been opened. So I can't go to the vault at the Bellagio like they did in uh, Ocean's <laughs> Eleven and uh, put my break into the server and you know exactly. go in there. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so now now back to the results. So the other guys, yeah, didn't, we, we didn't also pass or at, what you know? Uh, well, compare? we did we did find some some issues um, that, that we're looking at. Um, you're doing some further testing on, so. Okay, so we're going to be polite, we're going to respect the confidentiality yep. of, uh, and the ethos of security, as we know, sharing data is a huge deal, uh, and it's uh, in the integrity of the customers you guys think about, and yep. props for that, not digging into, we'll, we'll, let, we'll wait for the official report, or if it does come out. All right, so I got to ask you a personal question, Jason, as someone who's in, in the front lines, you know, every time there's a new kind of wave, whether it's Bitcoin and blockchain, you see a slew of underbelly hacking that goes mainstream, and people are victimized, in this case, uh, firmware is now exposed. Oh yeah, uh, well yeah. known. What, as a professional, what 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 gets you excited and, and what gets you alarmed, if anything, about this? What's what new revelations have you walked away with from this? Well, it's just, um, I, I guess, how pervasive um, this issue is. Um, you know, Internet of Things has exploded the number of IP devices that are out there. Uh, most of them have you know firmware issues. Almost all of them have firmware issues. And we've just now seen, you know, botnets being created by these devices, cam cameras, you know, IP cameras and things like that, um, that become attack platforms. Yeah. So I, I just want, you know, one of the things that impressed me very much about HP's, HPE's approach here is um, that they're being a good, a good corporate citizen by, you know, they're, they're making a platform that's going to be implemented mm -hmm. tens of thousands of IP addresses. Um, those, those systems, I think, will be much more secure and can't become an attack platform for other people, to, you know, to, to for um, so the surface area as IoT as gets. Platform. So your point about IoT, we always talk about the surface area of uh, attack vectors, mm. and, and that vector then can be minimized at the server level because that's like the first mile in. Right. right? It's uh, we commonly really refer to that as the attack vector, attack surface, and so we narrow that attack surface way down. Can you even subjectively give us a sense as to how much of the problem this approach addresses? I mean, is it? 1%, 10%, 50% of the, I, I the think, hacks that I are think, out there? I think the important thing here is moving, shifting the bar, right? I mean, I've likened this, um, what HP is doing here, to what Bill Gates did 15 years ago with the Microsoft memo. I mean, that really revolutionized operating system security within Microsoft, and I think it had a ripple effect out into industry as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I really think that HP is pushing the bar in the same way, yeah. but for firmware, uh, instead of you know the operating system level that that was the paradigm back 15 years ago, and I think you'll find on our website we put some of those studies out there actually, and it's over half. 50, I think it's 52% of the uh, firms that responded yeah. have had a breach or malware or virus in their firmware. So over half, and of those, 17% had a serious uh, catastrophic issue with that. So it really is more yeah. pervasive. We've seen a lot of uh, news about the uh, data plane level where thefts are taking place at the application level, the operating system, and we've got to pay attention to the firmware layer now because that's, like I said, a million lines of code in there running, and it can be an area where a Trojan horse can sit, and we've essentially really strengthened that and narrowed the attack surface. We're also delivering with the Gen 10 
the highest, the strongest set of security ciphers available in the world today, and that's the commercial national security algorithms that uh, we're, the, we're the only ones to support yeah. in our server, so we're proud of that. Well, Bob and Jason, thanks so much for sharing the insight. It's super exciting and relevant area in the sense of it's super important for, for businesses, and you know, we're, we're going to keep tracking this because uh, the Wikibon team just put out new research around true private cloud, showing that the on-prem cloud-like environment is going to be a $260 billion market. Um, that's a new research that's groundbreaking, but points to the fact that the on-prem server situation is going to be growing, actually. For sure. So this is, and with cloud, there's no perimeter. Absolutely, so, yeah. you know, here you go. I mean, back to the firmware's uh, potential exposure, you guys solving that problem with some good innovation. Thanks so much for Thank sharing. Thank you, guys. Thank uh, you. The insight, Jason and, and Bob, here on theCUBE, talking security servers, attack vectors, no perimeter. It's a, it's a, it's a bad <laughs> world out there. Make sure you're protected, of course. This is theCUBE bringing you all the, the action here at HPE Discover. We'll be right back with more live coverage after the short break. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after the short break. Stay with us.